Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of In Conversation with Gustav. And um, what we do is, is basically I have interviews with people that I find interesting. And um, Claire from the Wedding Club and I have been friends for six, seven, seven years. Six or seven years, yeah. And, um, and I thought today is the day that I'm going to get Claire onto the thing. So I'm just going to tell Claire a few rules, house rules. So we look into this camera. I'm yes. Probably through here okay. when we talk. And just fabulous. So Claire, welcome to on the on the pink seat. Well, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. Well, I must admit, I did not think that I am going to get you oh. out into my pink seat. So I'm thrilled to have Claire. To give you a little bit of background about Claire, you've started or basically own the most prestigious wedding boutique in London. You know, they are, um, I remember when I met you was at the Mandarin Oriental. Yes, yeah, Berta um, event. The Berta event. And, walk. and we've never looked back since. <laughs> Not told them. I remember Claire's, my first words to Claire was, she said to me, do you think you can make my hair look better? And I said, yes. Here we are. Here it is now in all its glory. <laughs> and here it is. So Claire, with obviously lockdown happened, the wedding industry, you know, we've yeah, had, yeah, I know, yeah. has taken a massive knock. Um, we both out of it and yes. going forward. And yes. how do you see, do you find that brides nowadays approach wedding differently or? Um, I feel oddly they're, they're more relaxed okay. in a sense. Um, and once they, when they find their dress with us, they, they're more likely to just go with it rather than have to try on every dress in every shop, which is how it probably used to be a bit more. Um, so I think they just want to get on with it, really, is, is the, the sort of feedback we're getting now. Right. Um, but, you know, it's great. Because also, I think, you know, with COVID, if it taught us anything, is that no matter how well you plan something, you know, if it's, if it's out of your yeah, hands. Absolutely, you know, out, of it's hands. out of your hands. Absolutely. And do you find that, obviously, so how many designers do you stock? It's ever changing the stuff. <laughs> um, across the board we have three stores. We have two in London, one in Knightsbridge, one in South Kensington and one in, also in Birmingham which is our original. It's our home. Um, across the three I'd say we have a, roughly 15 now, 15, 16 different designers. Wow. And are they all in every shop or are they spread no. out? So there, there are three different edits okay. across the stores. So. Um, the Knightsbridge store is very much our sort of our luxury store. It's it's all the big big name designers: Zuha Murad, Berta, Carolina Herrera, um, that sort of level um, of designer. Then we have South Kensington, which is a bit more of a sort of we call it a luxury boho bride. So it's your boho bride, but obviously with the the sort of luxury element with when it comes to the quality of the dresses. Um, quite a lot more relaxed look, wow. really. Um, and then Birmingham is very much our classic edit. Okay. So you have um, very classic styles from Suzanne Neville, for example. Um, but we do also have. Well, actually, I love yeah. I Suzanne Neville. Phenomenal. You know, phenomenal. Her call for the people who don't know Suzanne, she does phenomenal corsetry. Yeah. And her dresses the best, probably. is, I would say, the best. Yeah, 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 definitely. And that's um, those sharp lines she gets in yeah, those dresses. She's very, just, very, it's very like good. sexy, powerful. Yeah, totally, yeah. absolutely. And she's doing, she's doing so, so well at the yeah. moment. She's it's everywhere. Great to see her. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's nice to see a British designer doing so well. Um, so yeah, so we have the we have the three. So we, we kind of have a choice of designer for everybody. Is is I have to say to um, to to people, to customers, to staff is if we haven't got a dress for you, then I've done something hugely wrong in the buying. You know, right. because we have such a, a vast um, array of choice. And with so that's the big question. How do you number one? How do you choose? which dresses you're going to buy in because i think you know looking at you know berta or zue Murat, obviously yeah. they bring out huge collections i think berta yes. do they have is it four they've got muse they've got berta bridal they've got Three. oh yes they have four now because they also have the jolie yes. collection um and across those you'll have two collections a year um so that's technically eight collections yes. a year yeah, yeah. that's huge and they, they could be 20 dresses per um, collection. yeah and what what is it do you, is it purely that you go on gut feeling or? Um, we, we listen to, to obviously what our brides are asking for um, and, and just follow the trends in fashion because it very much sort 
sort of comes into bridal as well. Um, but we, we, we have to love the dresses that we buy. We can't buy something just because we think it will sell and sell and sell. That's not how we operate. We have to love what we see within the stores. Right. Um, but I do feel like we've, we've got a good grasp on, on our particular brides um, and we tend to you know, shop with them in mind, of wow. course. So. And what do you think is, when we look at trends, because yeah. obviously, you know, hair trends is quite interesting this year, how they have changed dramatically from the years before. So what are they this year? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to throw it back at you, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, so I find this year all my brides is hair down, and if okay. they do go up, yeah. it's something that is very, um, quite runway ready, so it's very okay. sleek. Yes. There's nothing... If it's down, you know, it's beautiful blow dries, it's soft waves. It's a bit like what you've got, yeah. you know. And Claire's got amazing hair. We've just coloured <laughs> and styled it for her as lush. And that's what brides want. They want to feel comfortable with their hair. Yeah. But they also want something that's a little bit special. Okay. Where I think, you know, what I see with a lot of my brides that's gotten married in the last year, the dresses were the focal point. Because yeah. I tell my brides, you need to choose is either your dress or your hair because makeup <laughs> makeup is you know obviously i think makeup arts phenomenal what they do all of those things but you know it is um it's definitely the hair or the dress yeah okay. you know those are the main yeah, things so no, if your course. dress is like a proper well i totally i the way i see it with the dress is the dress is it affects how you feel yeah. so if you you need to feel amazing on your wedding day the hair is also the same for me. Yeah. If you, if I come here and have my hair done, I will feel fabulous yeah. for you know days to come until the next time I come back. Basically, it makes which such a difference in the mood. Yes, exactly. It's every <laughs> week, but um, but it does make such a difference to yeah. your mood. And I think that the dress also it just brings out yeah how you feel about yourself. You oh, know, right. and you know it is interesting to see because I think you know with looking at brides and um, on the day when they put that dress on because so many of my brides will say to me do we need to get a veil and i always say yes okay because even if you don't like a veil when you put that veil over your head actually i actually get quite emotional when oh, i think about it because, yeah, it is nice you know it's such a it just i don't know what it is but it just makes it so special it well obviously you know brides who don't have veils it's you know it's still special but Get a veil. How do you feel about a veil with hair when it's down? Because I've that's always a, I think where do you put that there? So what we do is obviously we work things in so we either um do plaits, sew them in, um, okay. do knots in the back of the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um it's not impossible, it's a little bit more tricky. Yeah. A little bit of good back combing on the crown, yeah, okay. you know, good old fashioned. Sense. You definitely get it in. But veils, do you guys do veils as well? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, we have veils, we have such a selection. And do you find veils are becoming more a thing, less a thing, or kind of a mix? I think it's it's always been a mix. Right. Um, I don't see... Sometimes you will see a trend, if a celebrity, for example, when Kim Kardashian had her veil and it was very um, a very long blusher at the front, right. we saw that come through in trends. Right. Um, so, But it often does take a celebrity or someone to bring that through. Otherwise, you find that it's 80% of um, brides have veils, right. 20%. Just, just feel a little bit silly in them, is what they well, say. I, really which, I know, that. I love a veil. I, if I, I get, just think it just finishes everything. If I get married, I'm going to have like a massive <laughs> six metre Diana You're veil. You're going to have coming. three veils, yes, darling. Yes. <laughs> and like hot naked men carry them all around on white ponies. Uh, why not? <laughs> it's your wedding yeah. day. <laughs> and, it's a, and with the, obviously with 2022 coming up, what do you see? Are the dresses from the designers? very, very different because the designers that I see, you know, mm. if I look at, let's start with Berta, for yes, instance. Yes, yes. You know, when Berta arrived, 2000 and... We, we bought them what? to the UK in 2014. Because they were so ahead of their oh, time. Oh, totally ahead. You know, with those sheer plunging, yeah, very yeah, sexy yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, dresses. And I remember, you know, after year three, I, I remember doing their shows, because obviously we work yes. with you quite a bit. And um, I was thinking myself, I'm not sure how they're going to keep this totally. up. Totally, I, I agree, I agree. And it was a bit like, how are they going to take this and evolve it yeah. into something else? And they do have. I they, they, they really have. have, I know. You know, they've taken the brides and produced every year, 
a huge quantity of new content. Yes, definitely. And it's, a, it's amazing because you know, I've had brides six years ago at Alberta, and I've had brides yes. now at Alberta. And there's definitely things you can see as that. Yeah, there are signature feelings, but every collection evolves, yeah. I think. You see, you, I can tell the different collections from, from how it's, you know, from the sort of details that they've used within the dresses. Right. Like this this year, for example, the trend for fall winter twenty two from um, not just Berta from from a lot of the designers is a very corseted look, right. like as in sort of Bridgerton type corset. Right. You know, it's a very sort of it's a naked corset. You can see the corsetry, say, yeah, right. yeah. And and you, we're finding that through a lot of the designers. Oh really? Um, very very excited to say that we've um, we now stop Vivian Westwood. Made oh, to order, fantastic. so that's our fabulous news for this year. Um, and that, of course, because Vivian Westwood, as, as you know, is also she's a very specific bride, yes, isn't she? she is, you know, and it's a and it does have that little bit of rock and roll to it, which Absolutely. is she's a punk, that's what yeah, she is, you which know? is uh, which is lovely. And um, with um, what would you say is your best selling designer? It, or most in demand. I would sense. say the most the most popular or the most asked for or inquired for is still Berta very much so. Right. Um, we also have a designer called Milanova. Yes. So that's that's I didn't really want you to stop them. Yes, we have yes. Milanova, of course. Yeah. Um, and so they're also, you know, sort of very popular. Quite quite a different sort of um, look I think. Um, all of our designers get asked for that's you know that's why they're there well exactly yeah. <laughs> and it's because i must say you know with the the brides that you know i've dealt with that come from you guys from yeah. you guys it's definitely brides that they all kind of i think have an idea of what they want oh, before yes. they arrive pretty much yeah we will we, there are, will be some brides that um maybe they're not used they're not, they don't wear dresses maybe they're you know quite tomboyish um a bit like me really that's that's right. how i am so what would you wear in your wedding then oh good god um i would wear something very very simple i think right um so not zoo hanging around as well there are some zoo hairs that are more a little bit more simple yes. but then um, the thought of having all that attention on me is just terrifying i've been, I've been trying to get there <laughs> to um we were just speaking upstairs I did some red lips for her mm. once at a, um, actually it wasn't Berta show. It wasn't Berta show. And she went running for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I made you look a little bit like a drag queen. A little <laughs> bit like a drag queen. <laughs> but you know, nothing against drag queens because obviously no. they do amazing makeup. I wasn't a good drag queen, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> it was quite a good laugh. It was a good One of the makeup artists was just like, I think it's a bit much. <laughs> I was like, really? I love it. And um with with the dresses like Carolina Herrera, yes. are they? Um, of, do you see across the board the structure coming in? Because her dresses, I always think, is like the ultimate elegance. Yeah, she's elegant, but there's always been structure with Carolina's dresses because of the the fabric that she uses. It's, it's right. quite a structured fabric, so although it might not have all the corsetry um, that Suzanne might have, there is that structure within in those fabrics. Right. Um, have you ever seen it across the board? Um, with the corsetry, absolutely, it's coming through from all over. Um, and, and, and for British designers, so obviously you do Suzanne Neville, do yes. you stock in other British designers? Vivian Westwood, no, Vivian of course. Westwood, amazing, and she's um, the ultimate, ultimate British designer. Yeah, totally. Um, I, oh, Tempoli, we have Alice Tempoli as well, oh, Tempoli okay. London, yeah. So um, again, very different look. Because her dresses are almost a bit, I feel almost like a little bit Gatsby inspired. Yes, they are. Because they, they are, are quite yeah. low drops. Yeah, but there's still... quite a lot of the and the empire lines as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But also that the, she does a lot of deco sort of patterns across right. her um, some of her designs as well. Um, so yeah, so those are our, our main bricks really. And when a bride comes to see you, yeah. what generally? How long would you want in an ideal world before their wedding for them to come and see you? Oh gosh, now it's it. it, it our order times have um, have become longer with COVID issues, but also um, Brexit has created a few delays. Um, and a lot of the designers at the moment are backed up, if you can imagine their production is backed up now. So, so things are taking a little bit longer. I always like to have at least a year. Right. Um, 
and that, that creates quite a calm experience. Right. Anything less can be creating a little bit of stress because a lot of, you know, especially if we're importing dresses, they can get stuck in customs. There's nothing we can do to right. help to speed that through. Um, and I just, I'd rather have the dress in, in plenty of time, um, check it over, make sure it's okay, and then we have a, we allow two months for an alterations process, okay. ordinarily. So it's nice to sort of have that, that calm, you know, right. before, in the run-up to it. It's nothing worse than a stress fight. I don't <laughs> think I that. You know, admittedly, nowadays, touch wood, I don't have stress drive. No. They're all super well Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so, run us through what's the process. So, they arrive the year before. Yes. They, they come for fitting. Yeah. They fit. So, how much time do they actually get for the fitting? So, for the, for the, or for the first appointment, sorry, um, we allow an hour for the first appointment. Right. That gives, that's plenty of time to try on enough dresses to get a very clear idea of if you don't already know your sh the shape you want or the style you want that within that hour you will you will nail for sure the shape you'll nail it within the first 10 minutes well because i'm going to say do you because what one of my friends in south africa was a designer yeah. um said to me once when you go into a shop instead of picking what you like yeah. just pick everything yeah. Because what will happen is, is things you'll put things on that you didn't like before, mm -hmm. and that may flatter your shape. Yeah, yeah, totally. Is that? Do you find that most girls, when they come in, they already know more or less what shape works for them, or do you have some surprises? We we do still do have some surprises. Most most women now do the way that they shop. They're just more I don't know. They're, they're, they're a bit smarter with what suits them, and and why I'm not sure. There's better shoppers than than we used to be. Um, but we always have surprises, right. and you know you'll get you, you'll get quite a lot of women who can wear a very fitted fishtail dress and a, a fabulous A-line dress or a you know princess dress because it's, if it's all the focus is on the waist, of course, and they've got the right curves for that, they can wear they can get away with all of it really. Well, listen, if you've got curves and you wear a fishtail and a corset, I remember Amazing. I did this wedding. This is probably I can tell you the day they got married. This is the start. September, yeah. and she had, it was actually Suzanne Neville, and was corseted, and she had a fish tail, and her middle looked like this thing. And even that, she was tiny, but it made her look like, I suggested Jessica Rabbit. It was amazing, <laughs> and it's just so well done. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, I will say, trust your stylist in store as well, and, and allow that wild card to sort of come through, because it's what we do, we're used to it, we do, you know, we do, we've, we've seen every shape and size basically. So, um, you might be surprised when you come in and allow so, it. So then that's the hour, so yes. do they generally choose the dress then, or is it kind of a second it, appointment? It totally differs, so a, a, lot of, a lot of brides, especially if they know, they've done their research on Instagram or whatever, they kind of know what they want, um, so quite often they'll, they'll place the order on the first um, appointment. If they're not sure, obviously, they can come back and have a second appointment with us and just retry maybe two or three favourites. Um, and then once the order's then, once they decide on the dress, we place the order. Um, for that, a deposit is, is, is needed. Um, and then that goes then into the production, basically, of it. Um, and like I say, I mean, you'll be looking at six months, sort of, minimum now. For the dress to arrive. For the dress to be produced. Ah. Um, and then once it's it gets it's ready, it gets shipped to us and then like I said, a, a two month allowance for alteration. Right. So at that point, that two months before that's when so you wait to keep it as it is. Yeah. You know, whatever you are then that's that's what you're maintaining. So when when the bride comes in and uh, she's let's say a size twelve yes. in, in the dress. Yes. Do you then say to her, because most of the brides that I know diet or don't exercise, yes. how do you determine, because if she goes from a 12 to like an 8, right. how do we... Well, we try, well, we try and have very honest, open conversations with everybody, of course. So if a, if a bride is measuring a 12, um, if she does tell us that she's trying to lose weight or you know she wants to order a smaller size, realistic, we try and be realistic about it. You know, what's her aims, what are her targets, where does she normally lose weight from, what part of her body. Because normally, 
there's very few women in proportion. So there'll be, there'll be one measurement that's quite often bigger than the others, whether that's the hips or the bust or what have you. So we try and realistically think, if you're on a mission, what are you on a mission to do? To lose weight from where? Um, and how much? We also have an element of, there's a little bit of leeway in that we can, most good seamstresses and operation companies can also dress down by two sizes. So, although they're at two sizes, we're talking a few centimetres in between sizes. Right. So it's not like you're going, you know, that, that it's changing that much. If there's a dress where there's a particular pattern you're following, with a little bit like wallpaper, you, that's where it gets tricky. Right. Because you can't just, you know, you can't just take things in and alter them. So, but like I say, we have such an open conversation in store before any of that happens. Um, and we just, we'll, together we'll make the best judgment on that. Right. Um, but most, most brides, I haven't seen a bride in a few years who've lost more than two sizes, thankfully. Because we always say to them as well, if you're happy, just fit the dress to you, you know? Well, because I, um, the thing that I think, you know, so many brides always think you need to be super slim. Yeah. And from exactly. that book experience, the girls who sell the, the dresses or yeah. the look are the girls that's a little bit more curvy yeah, because a wedding dress sits better on you. Definitely. It fills you out. Where I don't get me wrong, you know, obviously there are the girls that's really slim that looks amazing in the dresses. And I'm, but it is the girls who are comfortable yeah, that the sure. dress just yeah, works. Sure. You know, it's boots and curves. Um, and it's, it's really lovely to see it. Also, yeah. You glow more. So well, that's the one thing I do always say to, to if guys come in and say, oh, I'm trying to lose a lot of weight, consider what that does to your face as yeah. well, because yes, you might lose a lot of weight from your body, but your face will also become a lot more sallow, you know, and that can be really quite aging. Yeah. So you have to be, you know, you have to consider that whole look really. Um, and I just think, why put yourself through it? You know, you're going to get enough stress from family and all the politics that yes. go with it. <laughs> So why on earth would you also add that to the list? You know? It's like, you know, the devil wears Prada, which she says, I'm on this amazing diet, I eat nothing, yeah. and I'm about to pass out, <laughs> I'm a king of cheese. You know, I mean, not that to follow. No. And then, so, with, if you could give brides any kind of, like, advice okay. in your short time <laughs> as one of, as London's, as the UK's top bridal boutique, okay via owner the whole thing so clearly she knows what she's doing because you know your business is very successful and people love what you do we love what you do so what could you kind of share with the oh, gosh, gosh 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 um i think the most important advice is to just be yourself right. don't and don't be so um fixated on instagram or your images for instagram it's your wedding day it's Never forget what it's about. It's not just about the gram. Um, as, as you know, I mean, we all want lovely photos, but try to just think about the wedding itself, how you want to feel on your wedding day, and, and be true to yourself and your personality, and try not to let everybody else's opinion of your dress take over, because that is, a, within the stores, when we have a big crowd of people come with the bride, those with that many opinions is not helpful for anybody. Too many. Because I actually think, you know, with, when it comes to wedding hair, which is similar to your dress, yeah. I almost think that have one person there, yeah, totally. no more, and if you can avoid not having anybody there, yeah. even better, because, you know, how often have you put an outfit on and you look at yourself and you think, I absolutely love this, and regardless of what Tom, Dick and Harry thinks along yeah. the road, you will just... Mm. Yeah, because you feel good in it. Yeah, you feel and you good feel like a fabulous version of yourself. Yeah. And nobody else knows how you feel in something. Absolutely. Only you can feel that. And also, I don't know about you, but I'm still to meet an ugly bride. Yes, that's so true. You know, the, and I'm not talking about physically beautiful, but once you stand there, you know, your hair's been done professionally, your makeup's done professionally, yeah. Yeah, you're wearing yeah, a yeah, dress yeah. that's made for you. Yeah. Very. <laughs> It would, really yeah, wrong, it would know. be very unfortunate. Would, that would be really... <laughs> um, but I think, you know, it's uh, it's just great to see that weddings are actually... Oh, gosh. I'm moving. so glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, 
would one last question before I let you go. Do you find that most of your clients are, is it predominantly English people? Is it predominantly, well, if I say English, I mean, is it people that live in the UK? Is it people from um, abroad? Is it a mix? Do we you have count? a real, real mix right. of um, brides. We, you know, from as far afield as, we've had people travel from Brazil to come and see us. Oh, wow. Um, we have a lot of, you know, Australian clients who, who might, they may live here, but they get married in Australia. So all over the world, um, obviously with the restrictions on travel, we did sort of, um, we missed our international clients a little bit. We will miss them visiting us. But that's all, you know, you can feel that movement again now. Right. Um, but no, we have, we have rides from all over. It's lovely, right. I love it. Oh, Best thing about it. Yeah, because you know, it is definitely the beauty okay. of London because Absolutely. You know, London is the city, in my yeah. opinion, with the most diversity. It really is. And, it really uh, is. and obviously that shows in the wedding world. But also, you know, I think it's such an amazing thing that we've got companies like yours that brings the the best talent from across the world. Yeah. You know, it's Israel, it's Lebanon, it's America, it's England, all in one place. Yeah. And you can come and just kind of go almost like nitpick all the the, the best fruits definitely, definitely. And, uh, and take it from there well Claire I want to say a big thank you thank you um, for, the, for the people at home that have joined us a little bit later um, Claire owns the wedding club and they've got three shops one in Knightsbridge one in South Kensington and one in Birmingham now if you are looking for anything bridal this is the place for you to go and visit. You know, they stock about 50, 16 designers yeah. from all over the world, you know, from top designers like Carolina Herrera, Zuer Murad, Berta, just a few of the ones that I'm going to wear on my wedding day <laughs> with about seven different changes. And I would highly recommend you go see Claire and her team who are beyond experience to help you find your dream wedding dress and of course they are to come and see us to find your dream hair on that note thank you so much for joining us tonight and we'll see you soon bye bye, -bye.